So it's, uh, we don't really know what wood it was. I got out of a wood pile, firewood pile. And uh, we had no idea that all this uh, holes and things were in it until, until we turned it. So that's about it. Okay. There you go. Quit spinning it. They can't see it if it's spinning it. All right, thank you. Come on, let's go. I know the first thing everybody's going to want to know is how long did it take? Yeah, well, I got no idea. <laughs> I said, first thing everybody's going to want to know is how long did it take? And I don't have any idea. I work on this stuff in the evenings or when the weather's bad or whatever. And I just wanted something that was challenging. And I've got another one that works. It's a Victorian clock, so I'm going to do another one here for too long. I got part of it started already, so it just takes a little time, and that's all there is to it. This was uh, one of them that was tied for second. Uh, you think we'd learn, you know? We, this was uh, tied for second. Uh, I'm not sure how many hours are in this either. Uh, my garage is cold. You go out and cut about 10 or 15 cuts and go back and warm up, you know. It takes a long time to get done that way. I'd, I'd estimate, though, it took me about four or five days off and on to do it. This was my first place, and it... Uh, Probably about the same amount of time. Uh, both of these are done on uh, butternut. And that's my favorite wood to cut, to, to scroll saw on. What kind of saw do you use? Well, I wore out a DeWalt. And so I bought a Delta when it was going out of business. And... Um, it's just like the DeWalt, and that's what I'm using right now. Um, <clears throat> this kind of work, I use a uh, spiral two slash zero blade. And I found that the um, Olsen blades are about as good as anything you can get in a spiral blade. I've tried other ones, and uh, just tightening down the thumb screw will bend the blade, and you can't put much pressure on it. Now, the Olsen stand up to all the abuse that I give them, so, and they're cheaper. <laughs> yeah. I'll take the lid off of it. Uh, this started out to be a bowl. Uh, it turned into being a, my wife calls it a jar. And it, the reason it turned into a jar is my brother does woodworking out in Colorado. He suggested this. The wood is all reclaimed. The plywood came from a piece of uh, furniture that my stepson made about 40 years ago. It's been in my attic for about 25 years. I finally got it out of the attic and I turned it into woodworking. Uh, the top is cedar and the knob is cedar. That wood I got from the scrap band trailer out in the parking lot. I didn't realize it was cedar at the time, but it turned out to be cedar. The top was made out of some quarter inch plywood that I probably had in my shop for 30 years. <laughs> and I, I was looking for something to make the top out, and I said, oh, there we go. So that's how that happened. And you don't turn, you don't cut this stuff, you chip it out. You don't, it doesn't cut. I actually end up making some carbide tools of my own 
to get this stuff hollowed out. It's just the glue. It's just abrasive as all get out. So. Yeah, this is a piece of solid cherry. Uh, this is not added on. It was all turned out of one solid piece. Uh, the little lid is a separate piece. That is Coco Bolo. Uh, it is uh, animal bone, the little handle, uh, the little Japanese uh, monograms, say earth, wind, fire, something. And uh, there's some little dragonflies carved in there. So, And it's a uh, stained red, uh, transcend dye, and uh, lacquered. And the black is actually all wood burned. This, this little John Deere, I made two of them, and I uh, also made a couple of dump trucks, and I gave the, uh, the other three to my grandsons, and I had to keep one for myself. So uh, it's, uh, it's got a lot of parts. I think I count at least 240 parts in that. There's some walnut and some, some cherry, poplar. Most of the body is probably poplar. But uh, I got a lot of hours in it. I'd be guessing if I told you, you know, I made two of them together, but I probably got 300 hours in both of them. I, I don't know. But it, it's a fun project. And you voted me a blue ribbon, so that's it. This is uh, made uh, using seven layers of uh, baldy birch plywood and spray painted. Uh, the cutting on this, I had to use a skull saw that was 26 inches deep because of the size of the uh, item. It was cut with using uh, number three uh, flat blades. Thank you. My name is Mike Delacamp, and I make ornaments. These all come out of two befores, and these little ornaments are supposed to hang here. But the neat thing is I used to turn eggs and little ornaments every morning when I went to the lathe or any time I went out before I started, I always did a little practice. A couple of kids liked them, so a few years ago I gave a couple away, a few years more. And then this year it has grown to where we had, Jim, how many did we make this year, the club? I know, I've got more scheduled. We're figuring out how to do it faster. But these ornaments, most anybody that's an average skill can make them in 10 minutes, maybe 15 my goal was to get them down to about five minutes a piece, and they're all under five minutes now. Uh, this is one that uh, Yale talked about last month, where people got real excited at the Mary Riggs because they're all salvage wood, all wood that was headed for the landfill. So it's a green project. And I think that's something that our club, we need to put for more, is that most of the stuff that we build is reclaimed wood, salvaged wood, scrapped someplace, and we're making something good out of what would have gone into the landfill. So that's, that's a real highlight, I think, for our club. We'll make 3,000 of these. There's two or, two or three other guys that I think are jumping in, but I think this year we made 12 or 1,500 of them. About 1,500 this year. I'm gearing up right now to turn out a minimum of 3,000 of these next year. Anybody want to help, you're welcome. I have extra lays in my wood shop. If you want to have a work class out there on ornament turning, 
We can do that too. They all have to go though to the kids. So anything we do in the, the class goes to the kids. This clock here was made by Jim Glaze. Microphone. Okay. This clock here was made by Jim Glaze. This one? Yeah, you like that? Okay. All right. This clock was made by Jim Glaze, who is not here, who came over to my house today at 4 o'clock and was coming to the meeting and got a call. His wife is ill. I know nothing about it except he told me it took six months to make it. We're off and on, and it runs on a double A battery. But it's beautiful. This bandsaw box I did make. It's made out of walnut and maple. I cut it with a 3 16th 10 tooth blade. I make a lot of these. I, I think they're fun. You can just keep cutting and cutting, and if you make a mistake, you just go right on, and it all fits together and fits in well. I got about, uh, oh, I don't know, three or four coats of shellac. I use shellac on my boxes. They, it dries a lot faster and easy to work with. This is my first attempt at intarsia. I made it out of uh, walnut. Uh, this was my first attempt at uh, intarsia, and I made it out of walnut, maple, and birch. And the key to getting a ribbon is the right class. <laughs> I'm Bob Hammond. <laughs> uh, this is a flight simulator. Uh, the plane's made out of Paducah, and I made decals. Uh, the box is uh, got veneer over it, and uh, I couldn't tell you how long it took me to make it because you just don't make it. Uh, just continues making it. Uh, I have no idea how many R's are into it, but it's a it's a fun project. I made quite a few of these. Uh, are there any questions on the plane in the box? Uh, the bulldozer is made out of, uh, the tread is walnut, and uh, this is yellow heart, and uh, this took quite some time to make. I got the pattern from Toys of Joy. Uh, the uh, tread works, and it will also go uh, up and down on the blade, and then you can also turn the blade. Um, that's about it. Any bank. I'm John Kneebone. Um, this is a, uh, a chess set that uh, made out of walnut and uh, maple with a bit of a cherry uh, border on it and uh, did a little bit of uh, CNC routing on the front side for the pieces 
and then some scroll saw work to make the actual pieces for the, uh, for the chess set. So this is the fourth. I've got four kids. This is the fourth one I've made, and that's going to probably be the last one here. <laughs> yeah. I actually started this last week, um, so I probably got, I don't know, Dean, I've probably got two days or three days in this, I'm guessing here. I'm Chuck Nardino, and the Lazy Susan, uh, this was the first one I attempted, and after using it a few times, uh, the base, I think, one makes it, we'll move it up to 16 inches uh, because if this size here is 12 inches and when you use it, uh, it kind of interferes with the, with the rack because the dishes are, get too big and it, it's just too cumbersome to use. So we decided that we would move the base up to 16 inches. It's made out of uh, uh, cherry and, and poplar, then poplar with stained cherry, and then the, the knives are cherry and uh, walnut that I had around the shop. It, I don't have, I did, did it just when I decided to do something on it, so I don't have any idea how long it took me. <laughs> okay, my name is Craig Mann, and the first box is uh, a veneered uh, ember wood on the top and then cherry for the sides. And it was basically designed to look kind of like a, a spider web or a little mouse hole kind of thing. And then the next one, this, uh, this is a walnut box with uh, kumiko made out of uh, basswood and essentially this is the same kind of procedure that's used to make uh, soji screens and so it's, it's just each one of these are an individual piece of basswood then. I'm Jim Crenna. This is a cradle that I made for my granddaughter in 2002. Um, it has some nicks and scratches because it has uh, experienced a lot of love since then. I did have it in here for show and tell about a year and a half or so ago. Um, this is all cherry. It's right out of uh, Woodsmith. This was a front cover featured article in Woodsmith magazine probably, I don't know, a number of years ago, um, went went up to Rusheville and picked out the picked out the lumber and um, there you go. <clears throat> I'm never done. <laughs> I'm never I'm never really done. One more time. Um, so I had these in for show and tell last month, and um, these were inspired by, um, by Sandy Cochran. She had some wooden ones that she had done, and I decided that I would like to try those. And um, I wanted to do them in acrylic first, but the first one I made was the, was the wooden one. And I save all kinds of gnarly looking pieces of, of whatever that people might be thrown away. And, um, you know, I started to save the smallest pieces, and I went through my junk, came up with this, and uh, so that was the first one I made. And then I cut a slice off the end of a inch and a half by inch and a half by six inch blank that, was, that will someday be an ice cream scoop handle. And um, so I start out by cutting an inch and a quarter circle, and then I stick it to a piece of of kind of like a jam chuck that fits in my Nova chuck, but it's just flat on the end and a double-sided stick it on there and then turn a, a dish on one side. And then I've got another 
piece that goes in the chuck that I have um, done a concave dish in, and then I and I drill a hole through it so I could push the piece back off with a dowel because this is so thin. This is almost razor thin at the end at the edge, so you're not going to pick it off of there with a screwdriver. And then double-sided tape, stick it on. It's a little tricky getting it lined up so that the center is the same on the back side as it, as it is on the front. Uh, then you, then I bought these these silver pinch bales off of eBay, and uh, my wife loves them. I made them for her for her birthday for the for, uh, uh, in November. I picked the correct category also. Um, I have a son who's a firefighter, and um, I got an early start on Christmas next year with this, so um, this will be for him. There's all, I am not even going to try to name all the woods in here. Um, there's only one that has been stained, and that is the, the ones that look black. I stained uh, walnut with a black stain, so... Um, that's it.